Good morning, everyone. I'm Sanjeev Mehta. I work for Hindustan Unilever. Yeah, in the last few decades in the world, huge amount of wealth has been created. So it has been created in our country as well. A lot of people have been lifted from the poverty trap. So it has been the case in India as well. Yeah, in the last 20 years, about 20% of our population has come out from the poverty trap and gone into the lower middle class. And in the last few decades, lot of material comforts have been created for the world and also for our people in the country. However, we are at a cusp. We could, this generation, could have a calamitous honor of presiding over a generation where we have caused irreversible damage to our planet. And none of us would like to be in a situation where we leave the world worse for our children than the world that we inherited. If you look around us, we are talking about spewing about 110 million tons of man-created pollutants in the air every day. If we look around us, we are talking about putting 8 million tons of plastic in the sea every year. We are talking of a scenario where there will be more plastic in the ocean than the fishes. We are talking about a world where 800 million people go to bed hungry every day. And this is in a world where today the obese people are more than the malnourished people in the world. Despite the fact that every six seconds a person dies because of malnutrition. We are talking of a world where 42 people have as much wealth as three and a half billion people in the world. We are talking of a world where three Americans have as much wealth as the bottom 160 million Americans. We are talking of India where 55% of the population has got only 10% of the total consumption. That's the scenario we are facing. We are facing where we could end up damaging the world. We are talking about inequality, where we are talking about non-inclusive growth. However, I am a born optimist. I firmly believe there is a way out of this problem. Now, this is not an issue which the government of India can solve on its own or United Nations can solve on its own. Let's be very clear. The biggest impact on the society today is through the private enterprise. And I am an unabashed capitalist. But I believe the role of the corporation in the society has to undergo a significant shift. We can't be sitting on the sidelines. We can't be saying that, hey, government, you fix the problem. While we end up creating problems, we have to be part of the solution. So whether it's the government, whether it is a private enterprise, or whether it is a civil society, the only way we will be able to solve this problem if we join hands together. I also firmly believe that whenever there is a binary choice, Good or bad, good always prevails. That is humankind. That's what we are made of. Today there is a growing realization that sustainability has to be part of your strategy. This is not something you will superimpose. This is something where you have to have a business model where the positive impact on the society and reducing the adverse impact on the environment has to be core to your thinking. This is not about CSR. This is about creating a new business model. This is about not running alone. This is about collaboration. This is about coming together, joining hands, and finding solutions to problems which hitherto have been intractable. Today, there are technologies which weren't there with us earlier. 
all of us are conscious that the cost of renewables are coming down dramatically. <coughs> it will continue to do so in the years to come with more focus, with more scale. I think we are going to get into the same way like we did with the Moore's Law on information technology a few decades back. So there are options to sort the problem. James Doty, he is a professor of neurosciences in Stanford University. He has, through evidence, proven that in the short term, while it might be the strongest who survives, in the long term, it is the kindest who prevails and thrives. And that is where compassion comes in. That's the model we need to create about compassionate capitalism, where we go away from the single metric of top line growth or a bottom line growth, or for a country of just being a GDP growth, or when you value the enterprise just based on the present value of discounted cash flow. You have to look at the impact it has on the environment, the impact it has on the society. That's the kind of enterprise we need to create. I work for a company called Unilever, where about nine, ten years back, we unveiled a sustainable living plan. It had a very simple goal. While we double our business, we will halve our environment footprint and significantly enhance the societal impact. That's what we set out to do. Our mission is very clear. We want to make sustainable living commonplace. But we are also acutely conscious that we don't have all the answers. Howsoever big we might be, we can never have all the answers. We need the collaborative efforts of all the corporations, of all the think tanks, of the governments, of the civil society to help us solve the problem. That is where India 2022 comes into action. We are very fortunate that we have the best of India Inc. joining hands, from the Tatas to the Birlas. We have the best of the global corporations joining hands, from the Shell, Technip to Unilever, and many more. The whole intent is that we join hands collaboratively in a connected fashion. We put our best might our best brains, our best thing into resolving the problems. Today, I'm extremely optimistic, and you will see today that in the four tracks where we have started working, there are good ideas, good initial ideas, which, when taken to its logical conclusion, will help us resolve some of the big problems facing us. So welcome on board, immerse yourself, and enjoy the day. Thank you and a warm welcome again.